Can you give the example, Salisa? Uh, I I forget. I can I I can give the example. Okay. Uh, he he has. Mm -hmm. He has. Mm -hmm. And um. She's. Yes, correct. She has arrived. For example, informal, kan? But when you want to shorten it, you want to make it informal. It becomes she's arrived. Or for example, um, I'll go there. That's the informal way of saying thing. If you want to turn it into formal, you say, I would be there soon. So it's longer, it's more polite, and there's no contraction. It tak ada yang apa, a frosted fee, a frosted fee tu. Okay, thank you, Salisa. And last but not least, number six. Number six is turn, turn or slang. Turn or slang. Okay, good. Example? Example, uh, for example, in form informal in informal sentence we mm -hmm. can we can use short form such okay. as asap mm -hmm. asap mm -hmm. but okay. in as okay <laughs> but in formal sentences we cannot use asap we have to write the full full sentences except in uh, informal sentences is as soon as possible yes correct okay so no short forms no slang when you're speaking or writing informal english okay right so those are six differences let's very quickly look at these words these are all in uh, informal english so how would you change them into something more formal you can use the formal substitution of vocab we've looked at last week or just any other words that would make them sound more formal. The first one, okay. Okay is informal. What's the formal version better, of it? Better. Sorry. Haja, what is it? Better. Better. This is okay. This is better. Okay. Boleh? Acceptable? I just said acceptable. Acceptable is another one. Okay. Better. Acceptable. It's more formal when you say you want to agree with something right what about the second one buy what's the purchase. purchase yes you always see this on shopee you always see this on grab food okay so buy is purchase what about help assistance assistance yes could you provide me some assistance in this matter when you're writing email you will be writing that also i would require assistance in this matter Right, next one, Ken. What's the formal version Ooh, of Ken? Could. could. Yes. May. 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 Yes, could, may, the proper or more polite models. We call these models. Okay, M-O-D-A-L-S. Right, next one, ask. What's inquire. The? inquire. Inquire. Correct, yes. Haja and Aza is inquire. Okay, I would like to inquire uh, some some confusion over the matter or things like that okay next one what about explain last but not least remember the word starting with e could you explain more what would you say elaborate elaborate, elaborate yes correct and another word you remember last week we look at the word and ingat tak? Enlighten. 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 Could you enlighten me on this matter? I thought it's your favorite word. Cairo, lupa dah. Could you enlighten me? I lost my book. Oh, ya Allah. What happened? It's been only a week, Cairo. What happened? That is so sad. Many work to do this week. And then you lost your book? Yes. Okay, tak apalah. Nanti you will jumpa insyaAllah, eh? So, in, uh, explain is enlightened. That's a formal way of saying it. Okay. All right. Good job, people. So, let's move on to today's lesson, which is, I'm going to close this again. Two sides of the coin. Have you heard of this term or idiom? This is sort of like an idiom. There's always two part of the story. There's always two sides of the coin. What does it mean? Is it like two sides? Uh, I mean, uh, two, two story from two people. Yeah, so two points of views, two different points of views. 
So it could be on one issue, but you will have person A thinking such and person B thinking another way. Okay. So in short, we are going to learn how to agree and disagree in English conversation today. This is what we are going to look at. Okay. Right. So here, I'm sharing opinions in English. Can I get someone to read? I like to let some some other people read instead of just me reading. Who would like to read? Siapa lagi I belum dengar suara malam ni? Sekejap. Hmm. Shahira, is it? Shahira? Hello, Azza. There are two Azza tonight. Azakia and also Azawati. Azza has just joined us, right? Azakia, is it? Yes, miss. Sorry, <laughs> I'm a bit late tonight. That's okay, no problem. Do I call you Azza or what? What do we address you? How do we? Address okay, you? just call me Zakia. Zakia, okay. Yes. Zakia, would you like to read Zakia? Okay. Um, there are many phrases and words that are used to express agreement and disagreement in English, and depending on the specific situation, some are more appropriate than others. Okay. All right. So just looking at the statement, what do you understand from the statement? Especially the part where I italicize them. Um, what do you understand? Um, mm, funny. Eh? Nah. <laughs> uh, Apa you faham dari the statement tu? Some words might... Uh, express agreement and disagreement in English, uh, such as like, um, I can't agree with you more, huh? something mm -hmm. like that. Huh? Like, to uh, menunjukkan agree ke disagree tu? Um, macam tak agree sangat sebenarnya. You sure? I couldn't agree with you more. Agreed. Huh? Agreed. Ah, uh, uh, agreed yeah. Betul <laughs> sangat apa you cakap ni, saya uh. sangat setuju. Macam Dah tak boleh, dah tahap setuju dia dah maksimum. Uh, 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 uh. That's the phrase, correct. Mm -hmm. And then the second part where it says, depending on specific situation, some are appropriate than others. What What do you understand from that part of the explanation? Uh, uh, this one, I'm not so sure. Hmm. Ayu, okay, Ayu is coming in. So for example, in English, there are many ways and phrases that you can use to express either you are agreeing on something or either you are dis disagreeing on something. But we have, again, like formal and informal English, we have to look at the situation. Is it appropriate to say this term? For example, I couldn't agree with you more. Would it be appropriate when you're talking to someone of a higher rank or someone of a respectable uh, position? So there are uh, terms and also phrases where they still mean the same, but they cannot be used in all situations. Mm. Okay, that's what it means. Some more appropriate than others in certain situations. So uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Is it appropriate to speak to higher level or just among friends or in our it's, team? I think for, let's say you're talking within the work sphere mm -hmm. with your bosses, with your colleagues, it's still okay. But when you're outside in a context where let's say like you're invited to something more formal, mm -hmm. the uh, the contohnya where there are royalty involved. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of protocols kan, when it comes mm -hmm. to royalty to the VIP. So mm -hmm. maybe that would not be so appropriate because there's a bit of informality to the tone. I see. Okay. Dia, dia agak informal sikit. Sebab you macam buddy-buddy bila you cakap tu. Okay. So yeah. to bosses and clients, Still okay. okay. Yes, yeah, still okay. Still okay. No problem. Right? So here, what about the lecturers? Let's ask Cairo and Zarifa. What are you going to say to I couldn't agree with you more. Huh? I think, I think uh, I will not say like that to my lecturer. Oh, why Zarifa? What would you say to your lecturer? Um, you are I... always right, sir. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you say? Uh -huh. I, I, I will say... I I always agree with them. I but, always agree. Wow, okay. Uh, but if I not agree, I will say I will say uh okay, but um I I will say I will say that I not agree, but I not 
I not I not mention that I not agree. Usually you just keep agree. quiet. Ah yes. Hmm. Okay. What about you, Cairo? Would you say that I couldn't agree with you more? To your yes. lectures. Hmm. Yes. Yes. I think with lectures, yes, you can still use that. It's it's not a problem. But depending on your relationship with the lecturers, pula, maybe there's a distance between you and the lecturer. So probably you don't feel so comfortable using it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But if you're okay, I mean, the the relationship is kind of mutual, kind of friendly. You can use it with your boss or lecturer, no problem. Okay, let's look at more. This is a tongue twister, yeah, everyone. Let's agree to disagree about agreeing to disagree. Agreed? We'll look at that yeah, during your role play afterwards. Okay, here, let me just... All right. So, this is why we need to learn how to disagree politely and agree still politely. Okay? Creating a friendly environment to agree or disagree. So, there are three ways where you can create a friendly environment when in conversation, right? So number one, can I get Haja to read Haja? Okay. Uh, ask for feedback. What do you think? Allow both people to feel what they want, uh, what they can talk openly and share their own opinions. Yes, okay. Good. For example, you're talking about a uh, sport, football, for example, and uh -huh. you want to talk about your favorite sports again, your favorite team. So when uh -huh. you're talking, you let people feel open that they can disagree with you. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Okay, it goes to the second one. Haja, can you choose the next person to read? Uh, next person, Aza. Aza, okay, Aza, can you read? Thank you, Haja. Okay, number two is be polite. Uh, news, news splash. You can disagree while still maintaining politeness. Mm -hmm. Use terms like I might be wrong, but or I am sorry, but I don't agree. Okay, so here's like sort of like teaser lah. Binjok dekat you, macam mana nak uh, disagree but still being polite. There are more phrases that we will look at afterwards, but these are some of the easier ways you can disagree, but still being polite. All right, so number one is ask for feedback. Number two, be polite. Number three, Azza, could you choose the third person? Uh, Arlina. Arlina, okay, Arlina, can you read number three? Uh, okay, number three, know when to end the conversation. When it starts to become too uncomfortable or when the other person just repeats the same points over and over again and out of mutual respect, agree to disagree. Yes. Okay, have you heard of this term? Agree to disagree. Yeah. Yeah, what does it mean when you agree to disagree? Is it okay to disagree? Mm -hmm. Right. Is it something like that? It's... It's almost there, but what, what does it exact, uh, exactly mean? Agree to disagree. We it's can disagree. only agree on the surface. Uh, agree on the surface? Yes. Yeah, kind of, kind of, yes. But when when is the situation when you will have to agree to disagree? MCO. Uh, ah, that's a good example that you're giving MCO because after this, we're going to talk about MCO. Okay, so... Agree to disagree would be in a situation where there is an issue, for example, MCO. Some people want MCO, some people do not want MCO. So it's just so hard to come to a complete, or what do you call it? Complete understanding or complete agreement. So we would just say, okay, let's agree to disagree. I'm with my opinion, you're with your opinion, but we do not have to argue anymore. So we're just respecting each other's opinion. So that's the meaning of agree to disagree, meaning still with our stand. So I'm agreeing, you're not dis uh, you're disagreeing, okay? Tapi no more argument. So that's agree to disagree. Usually you would say this whenever you're in a conversation and both parties are, are always just fighting and trying to point out your stance and there is no, there is just a dead end. There's no full stop, the agreement. Dah. So you could say, okay, let's move on. 
Okay, let's agree to disagree. Right, okay, good. Let's look at the next one. Okay, these are some of the phrases you can use when you want to show your agreement. Okay, so look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of them, how many have you used? Or how many that you have often um, heard people saying? There are nine here that I've given examples. Have a look at them first. Are you familiar with all nine? Have you used all nine? Yeah. Yeah. No, some of that uh, I'm used and some of that not used. Which one, Shaira? Which one do you always use? Mm, tell me about it. Mm, okay, tell me about it. Yes, yes. But give me an example. When would you use it? When someone uh, share, uh, maybe when someone not agree with my opinion, mm -hmm. and then I will ask uh, her or him, uh, mm -hmm. tell me about it. Uh, explain more why, uh, explain more lah, kenapa you tak agree dengan saya. You tak agree? Okay, yes. betul. Kan bila kita tak, someone tak agree dengan kita, we would say, tell me about it, why don't you agree? Kan? Uh, yeah. But in this con uh, this context, you gonna tell me about it bila you agree dengan someone. Pernah tak guna tu? Yeah. Ha, kan? It's, it's terbalik kan? Betul tak, Syaira? Ah, uh, betul. Ha. So, macam mana tu? Dia sebenarnya nak agree, tapi you guna ayat tell me about it. Usually express uh, kind of uh, impression that we are talking about. Macam mana, Cairo? We are sorry. Expressing what's the story that we have tell uh -huh. just now. So, they not much agree, can? Like mm. for example, if you can see again, if you look at the last three expressions, I've uh, put them in a different font color, in a different color, because these three last expressions usually you would use more for context yang informal with your friends. Contohnya, you nak kata macam apa? Um, okay. Um, did you guys sign up for the AZAC vaccine? Did you guys try to register for the AZAC vaccine? When it opened, the AstraZeneca vaccine? Yes. And, and yes. It, was, it was torturous, kan? The second round tu, kan? Yeah. Yes. So, and for so many days on Instagram, on so many social media platforms, people were just talking about how horrible the system was. So let's yeah. say you're talking to someone, you said, I spent almost two hours just looking at the laptop and not getting an appointment. So you share the same frustration. So you're like, tell me about it. Uh, that's how you use to show disagreement. Macam, yeah, betul, betul sangat apa you kata tu. So tell me about it because I share the same experience. Hmm. I think for me, tell huh? me about it is about um, two people. Mm -hmm. uh, are we... In the on the same page, hmm. uh, uh, on the tak? same page. Huh? So, macam, um, bagi saya kalau apa? Kalau maybe I faham macam ni, you faham macam tu. Ah, so macam uh. nak nak get the balance lah. Ah, uh, correct. Uh. Yes. So sometimes you would say that also instead of like Shahira mentioned just now, when for the clarification, kan, kenapa orang tu tak agree dengan you? But with hmm. Az Az Zakia punya case, I understand that almost there. Tapi not meeting agreement lagi. Yes. So mm -hmm. you would say, tell me about it. Mm -hmm. Betul? Betul juga. Mm -hmm. But Betul. in this context yang kita bincang ni kan, it's more about you're totally agreeing with the person. Mm -hmm. So about whatever the person is experiencing, you are also experiencing. So contohnya you nak cakap, oh the weather is horrible today. It's so scorching hot. And then you would say, tell me about it. So you're also experiencing the heat. And the hotness of the weather yang you tak tahan tu. Macam, mm -hmm. it's just another way of saying, I totally agree with you. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can say that. <laughs> tell me about it. Apa-apa you disagree lah. Macam, oh, BTS punya lagu terbaru ni best. Eh? Oh, tell me about it. Nah, macam tu. Oh, it mean macam, 
kita agree lah benda tu kan kita agree dia macam kita contoh kita benda lain yang uh, the faces yang lain yang kita perlu cakap betul ah dia macam yang uh, boleh kita gunakan kita boleh good guna- macam ni Syaira sorry Uh, macam I could agree with you So maybe next time we can uh, say Tell me about it Ah okay. boleh yes But again sebab dia in red kan So it's more of an informal setting Boleh je you nak cakap oh. dengan your colleagues Or your boss If you guys have a friendly relationship That's no problem You can always uh, say that Tell me about it huh? So it can be agreed and not agreed uh, uh, so, so we can use tell me about it For hmm. the that we agreed and not agreed right yes but how do you tell the difference aza here's the catch macam ni nak tahu sama ada you tengah agree ke you tengah disagree macam mana orang tu nak tahu you're agreeing with him or her or you tak agree so, um for example uh, in some situation mm-hmm. uh, uh, when uh, my colleague telling something to me mm-hmm. actually i don't agree hmm Um, I want to know what uh, the detail of uh, what uh, she is telling. So I I will say, uh, tell me about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one is for the disagreed. But mm. uh, for another situation for the agreed, uh, maybe I agreed with uh, her statement. Mm-hmm. But then um, I uh, I don't know the detail of right uh, of it. But hmm. uh, I, I maybe for in in terms of work, like I just know uh, on uh, the 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 um, apa, I I I just uh, I just know in, in the information, but the hmm. detail of it, the technicality of that, hmm. I don't know. Actually, I agreed, but I still want to cover that uh, uh, my my uh, kira nak cover, so hmm. I. I will say, uh, tell me about it. So I want to know the detail of it. Mm-mm. Tapi macam mana you nak tahu difference tu? Sama ada you apa? Orang tu nak tahu, oh you agree dengan dia ke you tak agree? How? How How can that person know? Mm. Siapa-siapa tahu? Macam mana nak tahu the difference tu? Yeah, sure. Expression. Uh-huh. Expression and tone. Tone, yes. 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 The tone. The tone. Right. the tone and the situation. Selalunya so, bila you nak kata you agree, agree tu kan macam... Tell me about it. You punya tone very relaxed and dia macam it's also from the facial expression. Okay, mm. contoh, I bagi tadi pasal uh, the registration of vaccine kan? So, mm. you can sense the frustration in that person saying also. Dia macam, tell me about it. It's from the tone, from the facial expression and dia tak ada tanda soal dekat belakang. Mm. So, it's not asking a question. It's just saying that, yes, I'm agreeing with you and we are in the same boat. So tone dia flat, not to say flat, tone dia berbeza bergantung pada situation but there's no um, question mark at the end. So it's not a question. Kalau you're uh, going to disagree, you would say, tell me about it. You nak tanya lebih lagi kan? So dia akan ada tone dia akan naik sikit dekat hujung because there will be a question mark at the end. Or can you tell can me say, more? Madam, can mm-hmm. we say that macam before, tell me about it. Hmm? Um, to show our disagreement we can uh-huh. say i don't think so tell me about it yes that's good alina there's another thing that i was about to mention usually when you're saying tell me about it and you agree there won't be any statement before so you memang agree dah dengan apa yang orang tu kata tell me about it but if you are disagreeing you would some probably have something before or after you kata tell me about it too so you nak clarify yang okay i tak agree lagi dengan you ni so Can you tell me more about it? Or can you tell me about it? Dia akan jadi question mark. Itu beza dia. Boleh? Okay. So, tell me about it. It's it's more of a native way. Native speakers, the mat saleh kan? When they're speaking and when they're uh, agreeing with one another, this is one of the more common phrases that they would use. Tell me about it. Macam, yes, is sangat setuju. Is common here in Malaysia if we use this, people can understand? Yes, it's common. It's common depending on the setting. Mm-hmm. Kalau you're in a setting where people uh, speak English, macam setting to speak English and tak adalah English yang macam native sangat. Just speak English and understand uh, simple basic English. Yes, insyaAllah can be understood. Okay. Tell me about it. Okay? Right. 
So what else then you you feel like, oh, I've not used this before, or this is new to me? For me, I have no objections if it's new to me. Oh, really? Is that for? Yeah. You're always agreeing. You say, I have no objection at all. <laughs> I have no objection, yes. So if I have no objections, Ni, would be when, uh, when would you use I have no objections, Zarifa? Selalunya bila? I, I actually, I haven't used this sentence. Uh -huh. uh, if But I want to use, uh, mm -hmm. no, it, it's not common to me. I eat a new sentence to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have no objections. Maybe for me, it's like we, we, uh, we, we don't have idea to disagree with the people, with the person. Is it? Yes. Usually when you're like, okay, your ideas are all so good. I have nothing against all your ideas anymore. So I have no objections. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Okay. But I have no objection would be something very formal. You would hear this in a court, kind of court case. That's how you don't get the objection. Um, the, the lawyer would be saying objection, your honor. But when you say I have no objection, it's totally against that. So, semua you setuju. Miss, uh, can we use the uh, the statement uh, if uh, during the uh, presenting the paper? Presenting uh, the paper? Uh, Boleh? Uh, means that um, uh, once somebody present the paper, so uh, the chairman will ask the, uh, uh, the floor members. Mm -hmm. uh, so, can we use uh, this? I have no objection on this uh, uh, paper. Boleh, boleh. Meaning you're totally agreeing with that person. I have no objection. I'm with you 100%. That's another way of saying that I totally agree with you. I'm with you 100%. I'm with you on this matter 100%, to point showing you have no objections at all. Okay. And then for a daily conversation, uh, you would probably say, I definitely agree with you. That's the more common way of saying that. I couldn't agree more, like uh, Zakia mentioned uh, earlier today, I couldn't agree more. Sang is tuju. And then you have a point there. Pun, boleh menunjukkan you setuju. And the last three ni, You can say that again, Nippon, this one used by native speakers as well. And again, if you would were to use this, it depends on the setting and the crowd or audience that you're talking to. You can say that again, Nippon, sama concept macam tell me about it. Meaning someone say something, okay, I'm, I'm on you on this. You can say that again, sangat agree. Okay, they're a bit informal. You can say that again. Tell me about it. You read my mind. Pun menunjukkan, you sangat agree with someone. Okay, any questions on expressions to show agreement? Uh, miss. Uh, yeah? Yes, Alisa. Today I want to use for the situation, I have no further comments with your proposal. Mm -hmm. And I'm using, uh, I, ha I have no objection. Mm -hmm. Boleh? With your proposal, okay. You can say, I have no objection, or I'm with you 100%. If let's say, contohnya kan, you tak nak tunjuk macam, oh, bagus sangat ni. Dah tak ada objection langsung dah, you tak nak tunjuk sangat. You selalu agree kan, nanti orang tu shock sangat pula kan, let's say lah. So you wouldn't say, I have no objection. So I have no objection ni, dia macam agree. Agree totally, dah tak ada flaws langsung with the proposal. Usually with the proposal, you would go with, I definitely agree with you. Um, I'm with you 100%. Okay, I have no objection. Ni bunyi dia macam, wow, bagus sangat proposal you. Unless betul-betul bagus and you want to say it, no problem lah. Okay, okay. Right. So let's look at this agreement now. Okay. Let me just let you read for a while, yeah? Okay. You can have a look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of the expressions to show disagreement. And 
again, the ones in red color, those referring to um, expressions of more informal tone. Any of the expressions that are new to you that you've not seen before? You can't be serious. Hmm. Uh, you can't be serious. Uh, what situation that we can use this? This one this. is um, very informal, Aza. For example, you're with a friend and your friend is commenting on something that she likes. Contohnya, she's saying that I think I sympathize with uh, Nilofa, contohnya kan. I'm talking about current situation kan. I think I sympathize with Nilofa. So you're like, you can't be serious. Meaning you're trying to disagree. She's broken so so many of our laws and you're you're sympathizing her, contoh. Okay? So you can't be serious ni is when you are in a banter or... A disagreement with your friends. Usually, again, you won't be using this with your boss or with someone of a higher rank. But in friendly um, conversation, this is actually quite friendly. When you're saying, you can't be serious because you're saying that you're disagreeing but without being impolite. Seriously is another one. You're like, seriously? Pernah dengar kan macam tu? Orang cakap, Yeah. Seriously, ha. So macam in all dengan you punya statement tu, dia bukan yeah. disagree sangat, tapi dia macam dia betul you cakap macam tu kan. Seriously, ha. So these two, when you are in a friendly situation, but the rest is when, of course, you're presenting proposal, you want to argue about the proposal, or you're in a meeting, you're disagreeing about certain matters. These are some expressions that you may use. You disagree, but you're still polite. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Maksudnya, um, saya nak mencela, saya tak bersetuju. That's one way of saying it. For example, you're saying that this is a great proposal to improve our sales. And you say, I beg to differ. I still could see some flaws in the Uh, game plan, for example. This is just another way of saying I disagree. But it's more professional in the sense. Okay, you can also say I think there's a better explanation. And if you notice, number three, can you have a point? We saw this in the previous expression. Agree. Bila you agree point, bila kata you have a point. So I agree with you. You can also use it when you want to disagree, tapi dia akan ada panjang sikit. You have a point there, but I also think that you because you want you don't want to offend the other person even though you are disagreeing with them. Okay, so you have a point ni, you boleh guna both untuk agree. Kalau you agree, you just stop lah. You have a point, full stop. If you're disagreeing, you have a point, but then you present you punya own point pula. Okay, right. And then that's not entirely true. As a matter of fact, I would like to point out that ah, yang ni you boleh cakap kelemahan of the person's argument, you can point out here. Any questions about um, expressions to show disagreement? Usually in in your meetings, how would you disagree? Do you hear? Do you often hear people saying any one of these expressions, or is just I don't agree? I don't agree. Uh, usually, I just say uh, I know you are right. I uh -huh. know you are. Uh, you have your uh, you have your own point, uh -huh. but in my point of view. 
uh-huh. uh, I think this is this, blah 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 blah. Ah, okay, good. From uh, from my point of view, correct? Yes, that is also polite, Haja. You're you're saying you are right also, but from my point of view, so you're asking people to reconsider. Just then. Okay, thank you. Okay, right. So these are some expressions you can use to show disagreement. Okay, the last two again in friendly conversation. Okay, next one. Here, okay, I'm going to stop. So here are feelers. Do you know what feelers are? Tahu tak apa maksud feelers? F-I-L-L-E-R-S, feelers. Okay, feelers, they are basically um, ayat-ayat yang you guna untuk fill in the conversation. That's why it's called feelers. Okay, so for example, like Haja mentioned just now, uh, after you've disagreed, you want to add in pula your point. You can kata, in my opinion, from my point of view, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and then when you want to interrupt, but usually um, you can interrupt, no problem, but you would still try to be polite. Sorry to interrupt, but dot, 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 dot. Now, if I might add something, uh, instead of saying, I don't I don't agree with you, you can say, if I might add something, I think that, what, what, what. And then another way of, this sounds a bit angry. Lah. So you're telling me that, what, what, what. Again, whatever it is, it depends on your tone, how you would say something. So you're telling me is, can be polite, can be rude, Depending on your tone. If you're like, so you're telling me that even though you disagree kan, tapi dia still bunyi polite. Tapi you ubah sikit tone you, ah, dia jadi lain. Okay, so this is when you want to interrupt. And then when this, we've talked about this, when we can't reach to an agreement, both still that argue. I still want to agree, you still want to disagree. So you can move on and say this, let's just drop this discussion or you can say i think we need to move on or this one we'll just have to agree to disagree again okay so these are some ways you can beautify or add on to your daily conversations when dealing with disagreements miss let's just drop it means uh-huh. that uh, we want to stop the uh, argument ke? Betul, betul. And let's just drop it in. Actually, dia, dia agak, not to say kasar, but it's at the point where you dah terlalu penat argue. So, oh. you don't want to waste time arguing lagi. So, you say, let's just drop this matter and move on or focus on the next thing. Okay. So, when the argument tu dah terlalu lama dah. So, you will say, let's just drop this. Okay? All right. All right. Ada lagi soalan. I think we need to move on. Again, selalunya in a meeting lah when you're arguing too long kan. So someone would say, I think we need to move on. Yeah. yeah, we still cannot reach a consensus, still tak agree. So let's just move on. Okay, right. So that's for fillers. And now let's look at... Huh. So what are these? They're uh, hot topics. Uh, topics are situations. <laughs> Look at um trending topics in Malaysia, and these were some of the things that came out for the past few weeks. These were trending uh topics, yeah, on social yeah. media for Malaysians. Uh, actually, Manchester and Liverpool too, because they've always been in an argument forever. So I just took <laughs> them. Any of you a fan of football, or Manchester United or Liverpool? No. Cairo, are you a fan of football, Cairo? Yes. Yeah, do you like menu or Liverpool? Both. Actually, I don't like. You don't like okay. So okay. So that's good. It's not a sensitive issue right now. So that's okay. 
Cairo just like Malaysia football, I think. Shaira, what? What did you say, Shaira? I don't like Malaysian football. Oh, you don't like <laughs> football? Okay, I, I don't watch football ever except for when it's, um, apa nama tu? World Cup. Ah, World Cup. Cup. Tengok, I used to kan. watch. I used to be fan of MU. Ah, I, I used to also when I was younger. Yeah. I actually like both MU and Liverpool when they had David Beckham. Yeah, and also, David Beckham. And, and also yeah. Michael Owen. So now, I macam semua. Now there's Mo Salah. Mo Salah in mana, entah? <laughs> Salah is, is Salah Malaysia? MU kot kan? Liverpool. Liverpool. Liverpool kan MU Cairo Liverpool, Salah. Liverpool from Egypt. Ah the the Egyptian man kan? Liverpool. So from Liverpool Salah okay. Liverpool. I'm a friend of Salah. You're a friend of Salah? Yes, I like Salah as well. Are you? I I like I know some footballers but I don't know where they belong, you know? Like okay, I know this guy. I know Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm-hmm. You know, the famous ones kan? And also the Muslim footballer, another one, Ozil. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I would watch him during World Cup as well. Okay. So there's no uh, sensitivity issue yeah, when, we comes to, when it comes to Man U and Liverpool. So that's great. But it's been um, on debate forever, MU and Liverpool. So you can uh, hear their fans disagreeing. And of course, on movement control order, MCO, forever since COVID started as well. And this was something new, Laksa Joho and Laksa Utara. You know what happened with the, with the disagreement? Yeah, because of the fish used to make the laksa. <laughs> God, yeah. and suddenly yeah. everyone was uh, talking about it. <laughs> and it was trending number five quite Like, wow, hebatnya, laksa pun boleh trending sampai number five. What is the actual story? Because I didn't follow, but yeah. I just uh, saw from my my friend uh, uh, FB uh, talk about laksa utara. Yeah. I don't know the full I story. Think it is as from well. masa apa? I know, I know, I know the right? story. Yeah. yeah, who 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 knows the story? And can oh, share masa tak jadi. Uh, uh, someone comment. Uh, Ah yes. Are you? What happened? Are you? We start because there is someone that comment unpolitely. Mm-hmm. And then they with argue. Can start with comment, can? Mm-hmm. Yes. We they argue they, about uh, about the fish. I think <laughs> the better <laughs> to make laksa. Okay, who won in the end? Anybody won or no? No, I, I think no. everybody enjoyed. <laughs> no one won. I think everyone, everyone enjoyed uh, fighting on the internet about yeah. this guy. <laughs> and then yeah. I think uh, Kedahan, yeah. Uh, yeah. Claim that uh, spaghetti also come from Kedah. Yeah, that, that was what I heard as well. <laughs> you, the, the word spaghetti too is from uh, Sapareti, right? Oh, yeah. okay. Sapareti. That one I, I read. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 one uh, foreigner asked, mm-hmm. uh, what is this? Uh, mm. uh, and then the orang Kedah tu, uh, macam dia cakap, siapa reti? Uh, macam nak balas cakap uh. that uh, foreigner. Uh. Korene, oh spaghetti, <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti coming from Kedah. Spaghetti. So in, in a way, they're saying sebenarnya laksa Johor pun origin is actually from utara lah. That's what they're trying to say, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Because of that spaghetti. Because of that spaghetti, I see. But the one initiating or the one started was laksa Johor, ke? Yeah, the laksa Johor. They comment like, yeah, Kedah used um like what? Uh, ikan murah macam oh, sangat happy <laughs> <laughs> but which one do you guys prefer anyway i mean in terms of your preference do you prefer laksa johor or do you prefer laksa utara i love both laksa pinang laksa pinang yeah shaira <laughs> i love both all the laksa you are just a, a fan of laksa azaya ah uh, i love all the laksa utara uh, apa Kelantan laksam right? Hmm. Laksam and laksa Sarawak laksa so, Sarawak so nice. Ah, I yeah. can, I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, it can go from sports to social issues to food and celebrities. So basically, people can argue about everything. That's the essence of our life: arguing. You know, 
but the the idea is trying to uh what do you call it trying to um promote healthy disagreement because i don't know if you're aware of this malaysia has been um malaysia is number two in terms of aggressiveness online meaning when we comment online our netizens we are very aggressive so uh, based on a poll done in one of the i don't know which company but they did a research online on cyber bully and netizens so malaysia came up number two i don't remember which country is number one but that shows the state of our uh, mindset and mentality lah in a way when it comes to commenting and disagreeing sebab kita di label agresif tu number two <laughs> hmm. in terms of cyber bullying so this <laughs> And I think uh, Malaysian people is more uh, commenting uh, this, uh, and agreeing about uh, negativity and disagreement. Yes, betul aja. Like um, we like to provoke, and then more yes. people will provoke. So it all the negativity would mount up. Everything yes. becomes so negative. So itulah itulah ceritanya. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not a uh, part of them. <laughs> no, okay, <laughs> good to know, Aja. Good to know. <laughs> Anyone else would like to comment? But I think sometimes it's quite good because um, when when it's uh when it's um trending, so. Uh, macam mana nak cakap so contohlah uh, example uh, when the when the news uh, apa uh, seorang so pelajar kat Sarawak tak ada enough internet mm, yes, betul, then betul. yeah so I think that's a good when this topic trending and viral so mm-hmm. Ada organisasi lain yang akan bertanggungjawab um, macam tu. Mm-mm. It's good that in in what do you call it in some aspects it's good that we are so consumed with online punya life ni that we would try to help people in need kan. Contohnya macam case, I pun tak ingat nama budak tu but when I I remember the girl when she had to climb the tree kan to get connection yeah. just to study and In terms of helping out people in need, yes, we the netizen we, would unite the Malaysian netizen. Ni. Mm-hmm. When it comes to cyber bully, pula, it's a different story. Yeah, can okay. I'm with you 100%. hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> good job, Shaira. Okay, right. So these are trending issues in Malaysia uh, as of last two weeks. Now, there today will be talking and disagreeing or agreeing on a professional level based on this trending issue today do you have any idea what we'll be talking about yeah what is it mm. mostly when the government handle uh, covid-19 virus Mm-hmm. The way the government uh, has handled yes. the COVID nineteen yeah. crisis, and for the past one week, the the hashtag that was trending on social media was hashtag Kerajaan Gagal. But today, something else happened. Another a uh, trend was trending on social media, which is Rakyat Gagal. Do you know why? Yeah, because yeah, because, because the queue. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, I also like government gagal uh, follow the gagal. SOP. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So that that was what uh that was what people were talking about on social media today. The disappointment um seeing at how our uh, citizens are handling the news on MCO. Like everyone rushing to go back, everyone rushing for panic, uh, panic buying. So mm. things like that. Okay. So today, because we are in an adult class, that's why I've chosen this topic, hoping to spice things up a bit. Mm. Okay. So you'll be on a friendly debate. So you're going to imagine that you're talking to your colleague, 
on this topic and agree to disagree. Not agree to disagree, sorry. You're going to either agree or disagree with one another in the most professional manner. Boleh? Boleh ke? Okay. 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 Right. Before that, I nak tanya dulu. You guys pernah dengar tak this term, eye to eye? No. It's an idiom. Maksudnya, sometimes you would say to someone, kan, uh, we may not see eye to eye on this matter, but, itu maksud dia. Boleh teka tak? Apa maksud dia? Penghujung. Uh, macam mana, Cairo? Do not end. Tak ada penghujung. Tak ada. Uh, kalau you kata someone, kan, I, I see eye to eye with him. Maksudnya, saya memang agree dengan dia. We see eye to eye. Kami sentiasa agree. Tapi, when you say we don't see eye to eye, maksudnya? Macam tiada penyelesaian. Ah, Kami tak ada penyelesaian, tak agree. So, this is what happen when you do not see eye to eye with people. Tapi, bila you see eye to eye, itu maknanya yes, you dah agree dah lah. Okay, so this, this is another um, idiomatic expression that is used in the native punya setting when they want to say they're agreeing or they don't agree. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. Any expressions that can help you draft your uh, conversation? Okay, so let's just look at them. Number one, we've got impose full lockdown. Um, SOP, what SOP stands for. We've got social distancing, large gatherings, flouting highways, break the chain, skyrocket, soaring COVID-19 cases, and then healthcare system at its breaking point, panic buying, risk unemployment or small businesses, do not comply, double standard, highways are congested, stubborn, do not abide by rules. So these are all useful expressions that you may use when you are going to agree or disagree with your partner. Okay, boleh tak? Can everybody? Can you? Can yeah? All right. So what we're going to do is, um, let me see, kita ada berapa orang? Sekejap. Kita ada 10 orang. Okay, good lah. Just nice. Kita boleh buat um, pair work, yeah? Alright. Uh, so, can you... How do I do this, eh? Untuk bagi the team. Uh, 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 uh. Alright. So I'm going to assign, can I assign just randomly? If you're yeah, going to sure. on the right yeah, side or on the kerajaan side, boleh ya? Yeah? Okay, so again, remember yeah, this is a professional disagreement that we are going to conduct. We are going to use all the professional terms that we've talked about. It cannot lead to netizen punya pergaduhan. Okay, it's going to be very healthy and professional. Right, so um, hashtag rakyat gagal, meaning you're not going to go with the rakyat lah. Would be Zarifa. Zarifa, you'll be talking about how rakyat gagal. Um, Shahira, you'll also be talking about how rakyat gagal. I need five people kan. Haja, you'll be talking about rakyat as well. And then Cairo, you'll be talking about uh, kerajaan. Azza, you'll be talking about kerajaan. Arlina also on kerajaan. And then, who else? Zakia kan? Zakia ada ke? Yeah, Zakia, are you here? Okay. Zakia, you'll be talking about rakyat. Yes, but I have some issues on internet, miss. Oh, okay, tak apa, tak apa. Can you hear me? All, all the while tu, dengar tak kita punya discussion? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, okay. Um, for... uh, ada dengar, ada tak dengar how macam tu? Okay, tak apa. Because I've recorded this. Hari tu punya video pun I tak share lagi. Nanti-nanti I will share the recording, okay? Okay. Okay, so for today, is it okay for you to be on the uh, on the discussion? Boleh, eh? Yes, boleh, boleh. I try. Okay. Alright, so you'll be talking about rakyat gagal. 
how rakyat do not uh, rakyat also contribute to the rising case right siapa lagi ayu ayu yes okay ayu will be talking about kerajaan eh okay miss okay who else haja is it haja have i appointed you a side uh, yes i'm side of rakyat gagal rakyat gagal okay who else have salisa Hmm, Salisa. Okay, Salisa, you be on kerajaan kan? Boleh? Okay. Okay, so uh, five of you will be on kerajaan and another five on rakyat. Afterwards, I'll pair you together pula so that you will have a partner to agree and disagree with. Okay, right now, I will give you about two minutes for you to draft based on your side. So these are some useful expressions to help you. Okay, so you've got two to three minutes for drafting and then we will start. B. Yeah. Uh, I'm inside of, I'm the side of Rakyat Gagal means that I agree with the Rakyat Gagal, right? Ay, meaning you feel like betul Rakyat yang menyebabkan soaring cases ni. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you, Miss. All right. Okay, I'll get to here lah senang you guys nak tengok. Okay, everyone at 10 we'll start yeah Miss. Yes. Floating highways tu macam sesak. 
Hmm. Sekejap lah. It's actually a flouting supermarket. Saya bukan highway. Sorry, silap-silap. Uh. Highways ni ya. Eh? Highways are congested. Flouting okay. supermarkets, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, double standard. Uh, what does it mean? Okay. What do you What do you think? Are you What does it What do you think it means? Um. I think it's like. Uh. Is it right? Like pilih No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Meaning. Um. When we impose a certain law or rule, mm -hmm. there should not be double standard. Contohnya, if you say cannot rentas daerah or negeri, everyone should not be allowed to rentas negeri, regardless of your status. Contohnya. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Okay. Uh, miss, break yeah. the chain. Break the chain, yes. Break the chain of infection. You could say that we should stay at home to break the chain of infection. Are we ready? Boleh, people? Or do you need more time?
Yes, yes Zarifa? Uh, because it's in formal uh, words, right? Hmm. So, because, formal words. Because? Because, yes. Uh, okay, cuba you buat ayat macam mana? Uh, uh, right, yeah. Eh, citizen should know their rule because because they because they have to follow the SOP and others. You can say uh, as they have to follow SOP or you can say due to the need of following SOP, comma, then baru the citizen, what not, what not. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, thank you, miss. Okay, no problem. Okay, let's start. Shall we? Okay, all right. So the first pair, let's look at... Do you need to look at the, the expressions for this? Or you're okay? So I'm, going, I'm just going to put this one in case you would need some reference for a disagreement. Okay, right. So the first pair, who would like to volunteer? Who are the brave souls who would like to volunteer? Um, do you guys watch Hunger Games? Have any of you watched the movie Hunger Games? No. So in the movie, it's an interesting movie. Maybe you could go and watch it. It's about volunteering to... Haja, kesian Haja. I think it's the connection good. So anyone would like to volunteer? Because Cairo is the only, um, the bee, the only thorn here. I'm going to call on Cairo, okay? Cairo, you will be the first pair on Kerajaan site. Not Kerajaan site, talking about um, hashtag Kerajaan Gaga. And Cairo will be pairing with um, Zakia, okay, mm -hmm. you're on hashtag right yet gaga again. <laughs> okay, betul. So Cairo and Zakia take the stage away. Siapa start ni? Siapa siapa boleh? Either Zakia ataupun Cairo pun boleh. You can start like this. Let me just show you. Sorry. Okay, you can begin with. Jom eh. Okay. So the, here's the topic. Let me just make it smaller. Jadi saya dengan siapa tadi? Ya, Cairo, you dengan Zaki, okay? Oops, sorry. The topic is the soaring 
number, the soaring number of cases in Malaysia, the soaring meaning the increasing number. What say you? You can say this, yeah. For example, Cairo, you yes. may lead the discussion. You can say yes. so because of the rising or the soaring number of cases in Malaysia. Who do you think is at fault? So you you check up on your part, and then you can say what say you to Zakia. Okay. I just note for all of you, you can interrupt each other, yeah, in between while talking to you can interrupt each other because we have the the expressions can untuk politely interrupt. Hmm. Okay, Miss. Uh, ada masa tak untuk for the discussion since we have since now is 10 p.m. Tula, I think I initially <laughs> I initially plan for five minutes, but can we uh, pull it down to two minutes, boleh? Maximum three minutes. So two minutes per pair, meaning both of you dalam two minutes to discuss. All right. Sure. Okay, two to three minutes. I will be the timekeeper, yeah? All right, so, um, siapa tadi? Kairul and also Zakia, would you like to take the stage? Okay. Okay. Okay, Cairo, you start first. Okay. okay, sure. What What do you think about the slowing number of cases in Malaysia? Full form is this? I think uh, this is a rakyat's uh, fault because um, I think uh, being a rakyat or citizen in Malaysia, we are now at a breaking point where we are no longer able to cope with uh, rules and regulation uh, given by government. Uh, this burnout is due to a double standard uh, between normal citizen, what, uh, as what we call as a rakyat marhain, and a T20 group, which we call as a kayangan people. So how I about you? I agree with you to an extent, however, it seems that the government are the one that should be blamed. Does impose a full order help to resolve the COVID-19? What happened to the MCO with PKP, P, PKPD, and with their version of PKP? It seems that the government uh, could not make a good decision. Yeah, I think so. Uh, this is because uh, as a full lockdown, right? Um, by imposing a full lockdown uh, also make people tend to um, panic and they are starting to queuing up at the rest uh, at the supermarket to, uh, to stock up their groceries. This could increase uh, the chances of spreading COVID-19 to, uh, to, to, to people around them. Okay, you guys um, got about 50 seconds more. Um, have you heard the government statement? Have you heard the government statement? Um, about what? Can you share with me? Where they are blaming the riot, the people. But they are the one who are making the rules. Yes, uh, like during Ramadan, uh, government allowing restaurants and hotel to do a buffet, uh, buffet Ramadan, right? So I think um, by having, by opening up this kind of uh, rules or uh, restaurant or hotel to do their business, this uh, we should not surprise where um, at today's, uh, at today's uh, case, uh, the COVID-19 cases increased to 9,020. 9, so, um, as people always say, uh, rules are meant to be broken. Uh, so, Rakyat Gagal is the reason why Malaysia's cases are rising significantly uh, lately. Okay. So, can, can I stop you? Sorry. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Zakia and Cairo, it seems that both of you are arguing on the same page. <laughs> right, both of you are blaming the government, isn't it? In a way. 
Uh, I'm yes. <laughs> yes. Because it, it seems like that. It, it seems like Zakia is, you know, is blaming the government and saying, oh, Raya is doing this because the government did that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Tapa. It's okay. So, meaning you have modeled how to agree with each other. Okay. All right. Thank you, Zakia and Cairo. Now, let's go to the next pair. Aza. Aza, you are on which part? Uh, Kerajaan Gagal. Okay, Kerajaan, and you will go with Shahira. Shahira, what, uh, which side are you on? I'm uh, Rakyat Gagal. Ah, okay, boleh. So, Aza and Shahira, you can take the stage now. One, uh, two minutes, yeah? Going to time. Right. Uh, the soaring number of cases in Malaysia. Okay, who is at fault? What say you, uh, Shahira? Okay, uh, I'm side of Rakyat Gagal. I definitely agree with this trending issue for Rakyat Gagal when uh, when uh, right, uh, when a citizen can't follow uh, SOP from a government mention. Uh, for example, uh, citizen for example, a uh, citizen don't follow a uh, SOP in a uh, uh, public transport such as LRT. When uh, people go to work, especially in the peak time, so they can't uh, follow SOP like uh, for social distance in one meter. So how about you, uh, Azza? Okay, uh, but uh, from uh, my point of view, I think uh, in this situation is our government is uh, failed to control uh, because uh, if you if you see uh, right now uh, the case uh, is increased day by day. Uh, our government uh, didn't learn from uh, our first MCO where. Uh, our first MCO, we have a, we have decreased the number of cases. Then uh, we did a pilihan raya at Sabah. Uh, when we did the pilihan raya, uh, after, uh, we our case increased uh, since that. And then now uh, is the second raya, which is our hari raya. Uh, supposedly before hari raya, uh, our case uh, is about. 2000 3000 at that time i i think our government have to make a full lockdown it means that during the hari raya everybody have to uh, stay at home uh, uh, instead uh, they uh, uh, they do a pkp but the lack of control at that time so uh, from uh, the hari raya, from this to hari raya i saw that uh, our government uh, failed to control um, uh, about this uh, COVID. Okay, about 30 seconds more, Shahira. You have anything to add? Yeah, I agree with you, Azza. But uh, citizens also gaggle when they, uh, when they, uh, when they uh, also uh, go back uh, hometown uh, in a hari raya because um, in I saw the, the the pictures when people upload uh, in a highway Gomba if not mistaken uh, the highway uh, the highway are congested. Mm -hmm. But I think at that time, our government should block uh, uh, the road uh, to the uh, north, southern, or east, west. Uh, every, uh, every toll for this area should be blocked. But then, uh, since there is no uh, strict control for our government, make people trying to going back to Kampung. Yeah, maybe some right. of them is uh, from PJJ, uh, when the government say uh, PJJ can uh, can can buy it raya, so maybe some of them uh, take advantage to back at hometown. Okay, all right. Thank you, both of you. Okay. Uh, that was a good discussion. Okay, because I heard you uh, connecting with each other. There, there was connection and building on each other points. Okay, good job, Azza and also Shahira. 
Right, next one, can we hear from Zarifa? Zarifa, which side are you on, Zarifa? I am in Rakyat Gagal side. Okay, Rakyat Gagal. And I will put Zarifa with Salisa. Salisa, which side are you on, Salisa? Salisa? Kerajaan Gagal. Ah, okay, good. Kerajaan versus Rakyat. All right. Zak eh, Zakia pula. Salisa and Zarifa. All right, you can start. I'll okay. go here for a while. Okay. So it is a soaring, soaring number of cases in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So from my point of view, I think it is uh, rakyat gagal. Obviously, it is rakyat gagal because uh, rakyat, rakyat children, actually rakyat children pointing their finger to the government and just blame the government because as not, not because as they should follow the SOP and stop and stop being selfish just and they should think about other and they they should stop risking other people and should stop think about themselves only. So how about you? What do you think? Uh, uh, in my opinion, I definitely uh, uh, say that it's on. It's not only uh, the riot is gagal, uh, government also gagal because of the first. Uh, you can see the 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 problem which is uh, elections of uh, elections at Sabah, which is uh, the government is allow uh, allow the peoples uh, went back to the Sabah for the election, but. Uh, after after the election, the the case for the COVID is uh increased. Is it because uh kerajaan is not a uh, monitor the people who back from Sabah and then do the swab test uh based on uh, after the elections, so we can uh, we can see that the increasing of the uh COVID nineteen case, and then the second also uh about the uh gathering which is um government allow the people to uh back to the home hometown during the ideal adha and uh christmas uh supposedly uh supposedly government uh need to maintain remain their sop which is uh not allow uh any festivals uh to to reduce the the case for COVID-19. You have a point, but I think um, the government has tried their best to overcome the, the uh, COVID-19 cases by doing the PKP, PKPD, and so on. So, um, I, in my opinion, I think it is, the, it is very important for citizen to play their role by um by keep the social distancing and stop stop uh stop being in a stop stop making a large gatherings with their family because uh this because this is because by doing the large gathering it will it will reach other people and it will increase the cases so if the government, uh, if the government has tried their best to overcome the issue, but but the citizen did not cooperate to overcome the COVID nineteen, it still it still didn't it still didn't help us to reduce the COVID nineteen cases. So I think I think Rakyat Rakyat is the main person to to help we reduce the cases because um government they they only have some some people on the the department while uh, citizen we have a lot of people which which uh, our action will affect the how how Malaysian would be so i think rakyat rakyat gagal is so i am agree with rakyat gagal I agree that right yet, Gaga.
Very far. No, I am agree tau. Uh, I am agree with. No, 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 I agree. I agree. Oh, okay. yeah. I agree with Rakyat yeah, Gagal. Okay. Alright. And I stop you guys. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Salisa yeah. and Zarifa, thank you very much for the discussion. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Okay. I'm going to talk about something that Salisa mentioned afterwards at, at the end of the class. Wait, yeah. Okay. Um, next pair. Is it Ayu? Ayu and... Are you and also is it Haja? Uh, yes. Are you which side are you on? Are you? Um, oh, kerajaan gagal. Kerajaan. Okay. What about Haja? Haja, uh, I'm at the side of rakyat gagal. Rakyat gagal. Okay. Um, ha am I missing any other people? Arlina, have you spoken? Not yet, kan? Arlina. And Arlina tak ada pair. Anyone else? I have not mentioned. Me. Shaira. Hmm? Shaira. Okay, Shaira. All right. Tak apa. So, Shaira dengan Arlina ada nanti. Haja, which which side are you on? I at Rakyat Gagal. Rakyat Gagal. Okay. And then, oh, there are two Shahira. Patutlah. Arlina, which side are you on, Arlina? Kerajaan Gagal. Okay, can Arlina and Haja take the stage now? Two minutes, tau. Okay, can we see the, the slide? Oh, sorry, okay. Right. Okay, um, the soaring number of cases in Malaysia, who is at fault? So, what's your opinion on this matter? Okay, I stand in point of hashtag Rakyat Gagal because from the first PKP, government has announced uh, uh, SOP uh, to break the change, but people not comply the SOP. Uh, people uh, try to make many excuses such as traveling for personal purpose, but declare as a business purpose. Uh, for example, nowadays, so many cases rising, uh, mostly from cluster identity, whereby government are forbidden uh, the uh, people to cross district, inter district, and also um, uh, uh, also uh, uh, but people still uh, but people still to do and uh, visited on Hari Raya. Uh, the fact, fact from this um, made the cases arise day by day. So as a, uh, as a rakyat, we should together with government implement and all and follow all this uh, the SOP. Okay, you have point there, but in my opinion, in these situations. I can say that I opt for Kerajaan Gagal because um, government need to be blamed for failing to tackle the COVID-19. Okay, why the social media users criticize the government for not imposing the full lockdown using Kerajaan, hash, Kerajaan Gagal hashtag on social media, which uh, literally means a failed government in Malay. Okay, uh, what does the hashtag mean and why did it trend? In my opinions, the hashtag of Kerajaan Gagal is a reflection of the frustration feelings among Malaysians over the government's failure to manage the COVID-19 pandemic, as well its effect on the economy. And I think um, from my point of view, government fail when the government lifting the barrier to interstate travels which allowing the coronavirus to spread far and wide have we not learned from the sabah election experience okay among the other point is the issue of double standards when it comes to the standard operating procedures that are in place Okay, I have to stop Haja and Arlina. Is that okay? 
Okay. Next week, the last three pairs ni will have to speak first. So, you will have more chance to speak. Okay. okay thank you, Arlina and Haja. Can we listen to our last pair for tonight, which is Shahira and also Ayu? Ayu, which side are you on, Ayu? I'm sort of Kerajaan Gagal. Kerajaan Gagal. Okay, Shahira, what about you? All right, Gagal. Ah, okay, good. All right. You can let me just go to the slide. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, the sorry number of cases in Malaysia. Who is at fault? What do you think? Uh, for my opinion, uh, uh, I think uh, it's a uh, riot gagal uh, because um, 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 uh, as you can see now, um, um, at mall or at uh, uh, actually, uh, at mall, um, they still uh, many people um buy buy the tea and they don't uh, uh follow the rule uh, about social distancing. Um, uh, oh, follow the rule about social distancing and. Uh, when it come at a uh, public transport, um, uh, they they many people that uh in public transport as uh, for example uh in LRT, and they don't follow the rule about social distancing. Uh, how about you? Uh, what? What your what do you think uh, about this uh, this issue? <laughs> okay, you have the points, but from my point of view, I think I'm sort of kerajaan gagal. This is because uh, the kerajaan couldn't monitor the people, the citizen, who just came back from Sabah. It is during the pilihan raya Sabah election. Election. I might be wrong, but uh, the government once said that people who came back from Sabah do not need to do a swab test. And I think this is the biggest mistake that Kerajaan did. And from this, uh, from this, from this, I think this is the causes to the increasing number of cases in our country. Because uh, the citizen who just came back from Sabah, they free to go somewhere and uh, they didn't have to do swab test or quarantine. Uh, oh, uh, um, for me, uh, I I agree with with that statement uh, uh, about um. Uh, uh, kerajaan, uh, kerajaan um, may be wrong about that, but uh, uh, after that, uh, citizens still need to follow the rule and regulation. And um, in this case, uh, I don't think we need to blame the kerajaan. Uh, and also blame the citizen because, in, in my opinion, Kerajaan <laughs> um, uh, uh, may be uh, wrong about that, uh, but citizen also uh, wrong when they don't follow uh, the rule and uh, the rule and regulation that Kerajaan uh, Kerajaan. Um, uh, give government give <laughs> um, okay all right okay okay can i stop both of you for uh, now okay, okay. Yeah, yes. are you and shahira yeah i'm okay with that okay thank you right everybody so that was how um that was a sort of like a setting 
of agreeing and disagreeing professionally because we didn't hear any banter, we didn't hear any negativity from any point of view that you have mentioned, right? So it's a fresh air instead of seeing what we often see on social media where you bash and keep on bashing people without considering um, how people might be offended by, of they might have felt as if they're being cyber bullied by your statement. So this is why it is so important for us to understand that it's okay to disagree. We should disagree, then only it becomes healthy. If we keep on agreeing, then there is something wrong with our conversation. But we can disagree, but at the same time, we have to maintain politeness, okay? All right, so I am so sorry I've taken your time again. So next week, when I see you, we'll talk on a lighter topic, okay? This, this is a very heavy topic, yeah, isn't it? Because trying to converse on, um, this is a political, this is a social issue. So it's quite heavy, but it's important for you to know. Because basically everybody in Malaysia talks about it. Okay, mm -hmm. so next week we'll look at something more relaxed and light. Something more personalized, something more towards you. Okay, I'm not going to reveal yet what it's going to be about. But I would like you to do some revision on informal and formal English. As well as agree and disagreeing. These two important parts of conversations in English that we've looked at so far. Important, especially in terms of your professional setting. Okay, I just I learned that before we end for the night. Do you have any questions? No. 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 Okay. no. That's it. No. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So I will see you guys next week. Inshallah. Yeah. So in the meantime, do your revision. Thank you very much. Sorry that I've taken extra time. So next week, we'll see you again on something simpler and also lighter, yeah? All right, Miss. Good night. Have a good night's sleep. See you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank, you Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Bye -bye. Thank you everyone. Bye -bye. Stay safe. Bye. Stay safe, people. Okay, stay safe. Yes, please. Bye. 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 Bye.